what happened here? No. What's up? Hey, for the record, that was powdered sugar, not pre-workout, because this crazy does not need caffeine in his body. But today, I am taking you through my current food and supplement routine to have good workouts, good energy, good digestion. Without dry skipping pre-workout, shotgunning energy drinks are absolutely abusing my adrenals. We've been there, we've done that, we'll talk about it later. For now, I wanna say a huge thank you to Seed Daily Symbiotic for partnering with me on today's video. The Daily Symbiotic combines prebiotics with probiotics. Basically, if you don't wanna lick a tree to get bacteria in your body, this may be something to add to your routine for now i'll put a link in the description box down below with a code to save 15 percent off your first month supply before we get into it supplementation should be just that something taken as a supplement or in addition to an already solid foundation of nutrition one of the best ways to think about this is using a concept popularized by eric helms that's called the muscle and strength nutrition pyramid which describes the order of importance of each element of nutrition and supplementation from a body composition standpoint now of course there's more to fitness than just body composition Composition. However, considering most supplements are marketed towards muscle gain, fat loss, or some variation of these, this representation feels relevant. The pyramid is arranged in order of decreasing importance. So the idea is that the levels on the bottom are most important as adjustments to these are likely to have the most significant impact on results, whereas levels higher up in the pyramid are considered less important as adjustments to these will probably have less of an impact on results. So beyond just the order of importance, understanding that each level is related is key. I like to think of the base as being healthy habits and lifestyle and each level up from that as being a multiplier. So the better you do with the foundation, with the levels below, the greater the product of that multiplication will be. And so it's in your best interest to build habits around that base so that you get the most bang for your effort buck. If you're new to my channel, something you may not know about me is that I started my fitness journey in the world of competitive bodybuilding. So I've seen a lot of things. I've tried a lot of supplements. This past year, my biggest struggle has been my gut health. I have not been digesting things while well. I've been really struggling with bloating. It hasn't been great. Just as food is the foundation for supplementation, your gut is the foundation for that food. So this past year, I've really stripped back on supplements. I've taken it back to basics. What I shared today might seem really basic, but I hope it reinforces that food comes first. While supplements can improve the value you get from food, a band-aid solution cannot fix a shaky foundation. That's all you need to know for now. Onward. <laughs> First thing in the morning, I take my daily symbiotic. Symbiotic equals probiotic plus prebiotic. Probiotics are all the rage right now. They're very popular, but as with many health trends that gain hype, with that hype comes misinformation and misinterpretation of the facts. So I think it's important to understand what probiotics are and what they are not. The official definition for probiotics is live microorganisms that when administered in adequate amounts, confer a health benefit on the host. Breaking this down, probiotics are bacteria, but they are not bad bacteria. There are many different strains of bacteria. Some are beneficial, some are harmful, others we haven't fully studied. Take for example E. coli. E. coli is a species of bacteria. E. coli 0157 is a strain that causes horrific diarrhea and is often the reason for lettuce recalls. Whereas E. coli 1917 is a strain that's been studied for therapeutic benefits on ulcerative colitis and IBS. So bacterial species as well as strain matter. Just because a bacterial species has been shown to have a health benefit doesn't mean that every strain will. What I love about the C. daily symbiotics is that they list not only the bacterial species, but also the specific strains used, which you you can read more about on their website where they break down their entire process from strain selection to validation and testing. Moving along, if some probiotics are good, more must be better, right? Not necessarily. Most probiotics will have something like 50 billion CFU listed on the label. Now, if you spent any amount of time poking around a supplement store, in general, the higher the CFU, the more expensive the supplement. CFU stands for colony forming units, or the number of bacteria that are capable of dividing and forming colonies in your gut. Now, a good probiotic will contain more than one bacterial strains. That CFU number you see listed on the bottle is actually the sum of the CFUs of each of the strains included. Because each strain operates in its own way though, it's required in a very specific amount. If you include less than this, it won't have its desired effect, whereas if you include more than this, you're going to be wasting your money at best. What I love about seed is that they select and dose their bacterial strains based on clinical data from academic institutions and research partners around the world. What's more is that in 2020, they began conducting two trials 
the first to assess effectiveness of the daily symbiotic in treating IBS, and the second under Health Canada approval to study the daily symbiotic's impact on post-antibiotic recovery. So they're not just following the science, they are leading the science. Final bit of this definition, probiotics do help with digestion, but they are not digestive enzymes. This is an important distinction as the two are often confused. We talked about this in my last video where I tried every digestive tip to fix bloating fast. In case you missed that, I'll link it somewhere up here or down below. But the easiest way to think about it is that digestive enzymes have one job. They just focus on breaking down and helping to digest one type of food. So they act specifically, whereas probiotics act systematically. While bacteria live and interact within your gut, your body is connected and your gut is at the center of it all. The benefits of good gut health extend beyond just digestion and bloating to metabolism, immune function, cardiovascular, skin, total body health. So if you want to check out the C Daily Symbiotic for yourself, this is what I use. This is what I recommend. Even if you just want to read up more on the science behind it, they've got a ton of resources on their site. I'll include a link in the description box down below, as well as a code to save 15% off your first month's supply. Breakfast time. We are making my go-to apple protein pancake. Then here we've got whole eggs, almond milk, protein powder, baking soda, flaxseed, ground cinnamon, coconut flour, arrowroot starch, as well as Greek yogurt. I know what you're thinking, or at least what I'd be thinking if I were watching this as you. Yogurt is a food often promoted for its probiotic benefits, so why not just eat yogurt or probiotic rich food instead of taking a supplement? Well, as I've learned, it comes back to dose. Most probiotic rich foods only contain a couple different strains, considering the pasteurization, transportation, changes in temperature, the entire process that goes into getting most mass produced products to the grocery store and then to you, it's unlikely that many of the beneficial bacteria survive. Not to mention, even if they do survive, unlike taking a symbiotic that has a protective capsule around bacteria, probiotic foods enter your body with no barrier to stomach acid, and so this can also decrease the amount of bacteria that survive the journey to your gut. Bad news is that food is not a super effective way to get enough probiotics in your diet. Good news though is that you can get all of the probiotics that you need essentially from food, which as a reminder, prebiotics are the fuel for probiotics. They fuel the bacteria in your body. So by consuming enough prebiotics via your diet, you can help your gut bacteria perform better. One of the easiest ways to increase your prebiotic intake is by increasing your dietary fiber intake. While not all fiber is a prebiotic, most prebiotics come from fiber. So looking at this meal alone, like you don't have to micromanage what you eat, but a really easy way to start becoming more aware of your fiber intake is to just like, Take a glance at food labels, see which types of foods tend to have more fiber, which have less. Adding up what we've got in this meal for one tablespoon of flax, what we put into this recipe, that's two to three grams of fiber. One tablespoon of coconut flour, another two to three grams of fiber. Depending on the size of apple you use, I usually use like a medium to large apple, that's another two to three grams of fiber. So with this meal alone, we're looking at like six to nine grams of fiber, which considering the daily recommended intake for adults is 25 to 30 grams, that's a pretty good start, especially considering this isn't a solid. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to eat fiber. There's no vegetables here. Workout time. Today we've got an at home, we're gonna do it outside, hit workout plan. I train this way one to two times per week max because more intensity requires more recovery and recovery is key if you want to stay improving steadily injury free. So I'm very excited for today. I always look forward to these workouts, but before we get going, I am gonna make us a quick little snack. I've got some dates in the pantry. I have been dying to try stuffed dates. I know there's all kinds of recipes. We're not gonna do anything too fancy today because I don't want an upset stomach. So I'm just gonna take like five or six of these, slice them down the middle, put some peanut butter inside, good to go. Notice how caffeine is not a part of this pre-workout routine. I forgot to mention that, but it'll make this next bit make a lot more sense. Can we talk, like have an honest conversation about you, me, and caffeine. This is not a personal attack. I get how it may feel that way if you're on that pre-workout, every workout kind of grind. If you've seen people online dry scooping pre-workout, mixing pre-workout, sipping on energy drinks, taking caffeine pills, fat burners, and probably missing something, I'm going to talk about these and caffeine interchangeably as caffeine is the main ingredient in most of these. Something I mentioned at the start of this video is that I started my fitness journey in the world of competitive bodybuilding. If you're unfamiliar with the process, basically over the course of 16 or so weeks, you gradually decrease calories to get very lean. Then you step on stage be judged on your physique in a bikini. I'm not doing it justice. It was actually a great part of my journey. But during that time, my calories got pretty low. My energy wasn't great. Most days were a struggle for me and my reliance on caffeine was extreme. I'm embarrassed to say it, but there were days where I was consuming upward of a thousand milligrams of caffeine, which to put that into perspective, the average cup of coffee has a hundred milligrams of caffeine. So it was 10 times that. I don't recommend this. This is not healthy. This is not a good idea. But to be clear, caffeine is not energy. Caffeine Caffeine works by reducing fatigue, which can make you feel like you have more energy. When in reality, 
calories or energy. Caffeine is not a long-term solution to low energy availability. Are you eating before your workouts? Are you including salt in your meals? Are you hydrating enough? Are you getting enough carbs? What's your energy intake like overall? Even if you're at a calorie deficit, you're trying to lose weight, there are so many adjustments you can make to nutrition before skipping straight to supplementation. This isn't a trash talk caffeine. Caffeine is awesome. I love it, but it can be even more awesome when used in conjunction with smart nutrition. <laughs> Abby, you really have been a mess. I'm a little nervous for this hit workout now because if my coordination stays on the track, it's been like mm, not good. Danger. A little slice. All right, so they have a slice. I am now going to take my peanut butter, add a little jazz to your life. I'm gonna try this one, and I'm gonna give you one. These are really chewy. Just give me a moment. A little bit more jazz. That tastes like a caramel almost. Like it should be inside a chocolate bar. All right, so we haven't even started the workout. We literally just. Oh my gosh. Big gust of wind. We literally just got here. I'm already sweat. As you can see, this is Chef's solution to dealing with the sun and the heat. Okay, so what we've got planned for today isn't what I'd consider true textbook definition hit. Most online work gets labeled hit are not actually hit, and that's okay. The easiest way to distinguish between the two is to consider training for max performance versus max effort. Most online hit workouts are geared toward burning a lot of calories and not a lot of time. They involve short efforts followed by short rests repeated however many times, whereas true textbook definition hit involves short efforts often followed by at least two to three times that duration of rest. So say you're doing sprints, Max performance would mean moving as fast as possible, while max effort would mean moving as hard as possible. With a version of hit you see online and that I've shared before, say you do 30 seconds of sprinting, 30 seconds of recovering, while the speed you move at may be similar in the first couple intervals, without enough rest in between, performance will gradually drop off despite feeling like your effort is just as hard. So max performance is more about quality, while max effort is about quantity, about burning those calories. So what I did today was a hybrid workout, working high intensity for 20 seconds on on, recovering with light movement for 40 seconds off. You're still moving between intervals, you feel busy, you're still burning calories, but instead of using those fast twitch muscle fibers and faster energy systems, we're letting those recover before the next interval. I put this work on my Insta. If you wanna check that out, I'll link that somewhere on screen now. We just got back, my little rat tail's making an appearance. You know, it's been a good workout when she pops out of the visor and the bun. So I'm gonna get some hydration going. I'm gonna get a snack. Post-workout, I'm having an orange. In case you forgot about fruit, this is a reminder for you. The real show though is today's post-workout meal, which starts with getting groceries. Carbs are a priority. They're your body's preferred source of energy at high intensity, low intensity, even when going about your daily activity. So today we're having sushi, sushi bowls more specifically. I must have pinned at least 20 recipes, but I settled on a smoked salmon bowl for today. We kind of lost focus at the grocery store and bought a lot of things that we didn't need. Maybe comment down below if you'd like to see an updated grocery haul for me. All right, so I've got my Pinterest board with my million pinned recipes for this recipe. Trying to figure out how to stage it, make it look pretty. It's stressing me out a little bit, to be honest. But we have got our rice that Jeff washed that I added. I did jazz it up a little bit. I added a sprink of coconut oil when it was steaming, boiling, cooking. I think it's gonna be good. We've got smoked salmon, pickled baby ginger, seasoned seaweed, seaweed, both of these you could just snack on on their own. They're so good. I'm gonna try to use a word here, julienne carrot, very thinly sliced lengthwise. <laughs> Black sesame seeds for garnish, lime, and avocado that I cut too early in the day. I tried to get ahead. It's got brown spots now, so there's that. Sliced as well as matchstick to cucumber, sliced radish, green onions. We're gonna put it all together, try to make it look pretty. Hey, I'm hungry. I know. Back again in the kitchen. Today is one of those days where I left making dinner a little bit too late. It's not even that late. I am just really heckin' hungry after that workout. This is not a joke. What I learned is that kale, when you just eat it as is, as it comes from the ground, disgusting. When you actually take the extra five or however many minutes it is to massage your kale, it's like it becomes an entirely different food. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a kale Caesar salad. I don't know if I said that already. <laughs> Step one, gotta cook those chickpeas, baby. So we're gonna rinse and drain a can of chickpeas, pour them out onto a baking sheet, spritz, spray, do whatever you gotta do with an olive oil, whatever baking oil 
oil you have, pop them in the oven at 400 Fahrenheit. Next step is to begin by opening the largest, loudest bag of kale. So this is definitely more kale than I need or you need. I'm gonna put some of it back into the bag. We can deal with this. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you actually have room to move the kale around in the bowl once it is in the bowl in the appropriate amounts. Today has really just been um, not a coordinated day for me. It has not been my best. So what we're going to do next is, I forgot the salt, just one moment please. And we're back. So we're just going to take a very generous amount of salt here. To be honest, that's probably a full teaspoon, but you know what? We sweat a lot today. Salt is not the enemy. And then we're gonna go in with our sprayer of olive oil. You can just measure it like a tablespoon of olive oil, whatever you want. I use a sprayer because I feel like it's it more evenly distributed across the leaves. And I go in here again, generously. Put your hands in and grip it, all right? Your hands are going to get tired, so I recommend maybe starting with one hand, doing that for like a minute, then switching over to the other hand. You'll also notice that as you keep massaging the kale, you're gonna lose a lot of size. So we might actually end up adding some of that, some of that kale we put back in the bag. Bring in the big boys, using some power tools for our dressing today. So what we're going to do is assemble your food processor. Yes, that is the only way that it works. And here, I'll put the full recipe in the comments in the description box. <laughs> Guys, this is bad. I don't usually leave it this long. It's just when I work out really hard, I get really hungry, and sometimes it doesn't affect me. In you know, there's like a little bit of a dip, and then we come up, we come back really strong and really smart, but sometimes there's that dip initially. Our camera cut out, but we are back. We're ready to go. So we're gonna be adding our capers. Two capers. Again, these are you know pretty straightforward to camp. How <laughs> tonight's going? Who knows? We are also going to add some parmesan. I will put vegan swaps for this recipe if you're vegan, if you're plant-based, any of that down in the description box down below with the rest of the recipe. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna transfer some of our pre-marinated and massaged kale over to this slightly smaller bowl because let's be honest, I'm not gonna make it through all this. Check out how crispy, how golden, how gorgeous these chickpeas are looking. So I'm gonna take some of these, transfer them to our bowl of salad, give some to the grand, give some to the dogs. Mix that all together. There's probably a better way that people do this, but yummy. This is actually starting to look like a proper salad. Look at that. Lovely salad. Just the right ratio of crispy, creamy, crunchy, all the textures, all the flavors in here. I'm going to dig in. We're going to be here a bit. One eternity later. I did my best. We made it about halfway through this smaller bowl, which I know did not look like a lot at the start, but the beauty of this meal, especially if you're at a calorie deficit, you're trying to cut back on what you're eating, maybe you're trying to lose weight, something like that. Neither of those are a priority for me. I'm just about that fiber right now. But this meal is great because by the time you're done or even half done, you are going to be bored of eating. You're going to be tired of eating. It's delicious, but you will lose interest in this meal. So I'm gonna pack the other half of this up for tomorrow. It's very tasty. It's just like my jaw is tired. I feel like I just gotta work out it. Final snack of the night. I promise, now I'm delivering. Now I'm gonna give you a little disclaimer before we get into this snack. This is a snack that I have not made in years. That's a lie, I made it earlier this week, but prior to that, I had not made in years. Tonight we are making protein fluff. There's nothing magic about protein powder. Depending which type you get, they may contain a slightly different amino acid breakdown or be quicker or slower to digest. But beyond that, it's really just a pre-portioned serving of protein. Most protein powders contain between 20 to 30 grams of protein per scoop, which based on the literature is the amount to maximally stimulate muscle protein synthesis. You could just as easily get this protein from eggs, tofu, Greek yogurt, like whatever your preference is. But kind of like what I was saying with the prebiotic fiber, protein powder is really, really convenient. It makes it easy to get protein in what you're already eating, which can make it easier to adhere to a high protein diet. So while protein powder isn't magic, I do think it's one of the best supplements. It makes it so much easier to meet your nutritional needs, especially if you're not used to eating a lot of protein. Step one, you gotta put ice in your blender. A few weeks back, Jeff treated me to a life of luxury with this ice maker. It's a dedicated ice maker. He mainly got this to ice my shins after running, but now that we are potentially on a protein fluff kick again, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. I am going to grab some ice from here. So I would recommend in general, like, probably a cup and a half to two cups of ice. I'm gonna eyeball that. That is a theme of most of these videos. We're just gonna slam that on in there. Step two is we're going to blend that ice. We want our ice fully crushed so when we add in the rest of our ingredients, they easily mix in rather than getting kind of like clumpy and all over the place. So 
going ahead with that. So I'm gonna start by adding in my vegan protein powder. Today I'm using a pea and rice protein blend as I find that that is less bloating than most of the whey and casein varieties. Some Greek yogurt. I don't really measure this too closely. I do like anywhere from two to four tablespoons. Next we're gonna add in some powdered peanut butter. I know a lot of recipes call for like a sugar-free jello mix, but I just find by adding this in, there's no artificial sweeteners in it. It's nice and plain. If we need a little bit of extra sweetness, we can add some stevia or a sweetener that I know agrees with my digestion. Next Next up, and this step is key, we are going to add in some agar agar powder. This is a thickening agent. Other ingredients I've seen used are guar gum, xanthan gum. This is really just what I had in my pantry. I think I just put in way too much. We'll see. I'm talking to you, not focusing on the recipes. We've got that. A little bit of olive oil, just like just a spring. Just do a little bit because you really don't want this to come out runny. Pop the lid on here. And this is the real trick. We gotta go at this for like three to five minutes for it to reach full thickness. All right, here we go. Smoothie looking thick, smoothie looking ready. So I'm going to grab this, take it with me to the couch. We are gonna go watch a movie. I'm a little bit upset because we looked at this movie that I researched, that I was planning for, that I was excited for on Netflix Prime and whatever the heck our Canadian streaming uh, provider service is via the cable, the network. What am I talking about? Cannot find it. Hopefully we find it. Maybe we will, maybe we don't. But if you have any movie recommendations that are good, like sci-fi, alternate reality, dystopian reality, parallel, lol universe all right you're picking up what i'm putting down let me know in the comment section down below some that we've watched recently and i shouldn't say like super recently but that were really good were the man from earth it's a slow burn it's a lot of dialogue but if you like the old star treks like deep space nine um i would highly recommend that one as well as coherence that one jeff and i had to like decipher and pull apart to figure out exactly what was going on there were multiple timelines all that kind of stuff so highly recommend those but if you have any recommendations for me let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.